Hey people, how are you? It's Michaela Voletta, also known as the Body Scientist and the Renaissance Amazon. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Right now, I am live on my IG page, the underscore Renaissance underscore Amazon underscore 81. But I'm also recording this another video to post, or, I mean, another, sorry, another camera to post on my YouTube page, The Renaissance Amazon. So that's where this video will be forever. So make sure you follow me in both places because I don't always post the same things in both places. Um, so I hope you all are taking care of yourselves today and feeling well. Um, for those of you who follow me, you know I'm a lot of things, but one of them is a science nerd, body science in particular. So what that means is this, all the science that pertains to how we can keep our body as healthy as possible, take it to its highest level, and reach our full genetic potential, okay? Because genes, just because you have genes don't mean they'll be expressed, and that's whether it's good or bad, okay? There are things that turn your genes on and off. There are things that mutate your genes and change your genes, right? And a lot of that has to do with what you do with your body and what you put in your body, okay? Um, and so, um, my background, for those of you who are unfamiliar with me, um, my background is in exercise and sports science and nutrition science, okay? Um, and I started off in biotechnology first. So I was very much into genetic engineering and I wanted to be a scientist and research uh, genetic cures, okay? Research the cures for genetic diseases, sorry. I'm tired. Um, but... Um, in this field that I'm in, I have a very um, preventative approach to things. I'm, I'm very much into preventative medicine, preventative measures. How do we, because if you're, if you're trying to live long and strong and you want your body to function at its highest level, that means you don't get sick, right? So you have to do things to be healthy so that that does not happen. And I'm a huge science nerd when it comes to like, like anytime there's an infectious disease, I like to know how does that virus or bacteria work, the pathophysiology of that virus or bacteria. So, you know, um, how does it work? What does it do? And with this COVID virus, um, I've been researching it avidly, and um, I've learned that it binds to the ACE2 receptors, right? So it's like, okay, it binds to the ACE2 receptors in our lungs. So I started to think to myself, because this is how I think, I'm like, okay, so where else in the body could we have ACE2 receptors, right? And come to find out, we have them on our heart, we have them in our intestines, we have them on our skin, we have them in our central nervous system, in the testes, in the uterus, um, in the liver, in the kidneys, okay? So that means that you know, we get, we're getting told that, you know, it's like you, the symptoms you get are coughing and sneezing and you can't breathe, but that's not it, okay? Because you can get really bad gastrointestinal symptoms because we do have a lot of ACE2 receptors in the intestines. And I, we have more ACE2 receptors in the intestines than we do in our lungs. And I always talk about how our, our immune system, right? 70% of our immune system is in our gut, right? And those of you who follow me know that I'm always talking about how important it is to nourish your microbiome, okay? Why it's not good to take antibiotics or use the artificial antibacterial soaps um, because it kills your microbiome. You absolutely need good bacteria. Good bacteria are your first line of defense against infectious disease. We have trillions of different bacteria um, uh, cells in our intestines, okay? And when you have an imbalance, which a lot of people do from eating foods with herbicides and pesticides and antibiotics and taking antibiotics and, you know, um, a lot of people have a um, imbalance of bacteria, okay? I'm not going to get too much in depth with that because I have several videos where I get in depth with that and I'll post that below this YouTube video. Um, but there, when the ACE2 recept, when the virus binds to the receptors in our intestines, it starts to change the gut flora, okay? Um, our immune system is very complex, and we play a huge role in that, right? Um, but also, so, so people can get gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, really bad stomach pain. Um, those are also symptoms. And a lot of people, I did a video yesterday on my page, The Body Scientist 81, about 
um, how it affects the heart and gastrointestinal tract and how to recognize it and why, right? But it can cause those symptoms. And there are a lot of people who don't test positive in the nasal cavity, but they do test positive in their stool. So the virus will be in their stool, but it's not in their nasal cavity. There are people, and that, that's like 50% of people, or over 50%. Then there are people who they tested positive in the nasal cavity that cleared up, you know, symptoms were no longer there, and they were still testing positive for weeks after that in the stool, fecal matter. And, um, and so that has its implications. So you do have to be aware that if you all of a sudden have really bad diarrhea or really bad stomach pain, that that also could be a sign of it. Also, um, it affects the central nervous system, okay? So people can also lose their sense of smell lose their sense of taste, those are neurological um, uh, symptoms, you know, neurological reactions, okay? Um, also, really bad headaches, really bad fatigue. I know that when I came back from New York, I was, I'm going to New York tomorrow, but I left New York on March 9th, was the last time I was in New York, and when I came back to Chicago, I was, I had a bad headache, uh, well, it wasn't that bad, but it was, it was, it was, it wasn't that bad, but it was bad enough where I couldn't really function at my highest level. Okay, I noticed that. So I had this headache, and I was so tired for like eight, nine days after I returned from New York last time. Who knows? That could have been COVID. But definitely, like, really bad fatigue and headaches is also a neurological symptom. Also, some people are getting strokes because of it, okay? So the doctors in New York talk about how they saw a way higher percentage of stroke victims than, they, than what was normal. And they were seeing it in people who were 12 years younger than, than normal, than average, or whatever the, the normal age is for that. So, um, and they because it's a new virus, they're still researching it. I've been staying up on the research, but they think that it could cause long-term neurological issues, the same way it is causing long-term lung issues. There are people who've had the virus and they recover, but they have permanent holes in their lungs, you know? so. They have reduced lung capacity for the rest of their life, right? And it could possibly cause permanent issues neurologically, okay? Um, this virus is very contagious, and it's aggressive, and it binds to ACE2 receptors that we have all over our bodies, okay? So who knows what role it may play in the reproductive tract? We only know when time tell, when, as time goes on. Also, with skin, you know, our skin is also our largest organ. Okay, and it's a huge part of our immune system. And what you put on your skin, I talk about this all the time, what you put on your skin also really matters. A lot of people use regular lotion, this water and chemicals, and on the bottle it says, if you ingest this, call the poison control hotline. If you can't eat something, it should not be on your skin. Things get through your skin and into your blood way easier through your skin than it does if you even ingest it, okay? So what you put on your skin will penetrate through into your bloodstream. So if something is toxic in your gut, then it's toxic on your skin, okay? There's also a gut-skin connection as well. There's also a gut-skin connection as well. Because if people that have really bad skin or all these bumps and all these issues, it's coming from a, a, a gut flora that's out of balance. And I'm not going to get super in-depth with that here because I have several videos where I talk about that. But understand that. You can do your research. You can check out my other videos. Um, that's definitely a fact, okay? And this is also why, you know, I've, I've said that using artificial hand sanitizer, like it's one thing if you're using natural hand sanitizer that's made from like natural things like aloe and tea tree oil and stuff like that. But if you're using them that have, you know, the kind that has like all those chemicals in it, they kill the good and the bad bacteria. And the bad bacteria mutate, okay? They mutate to become more aggressive and then they outnumber the good bacteria and your good bacteria or your first line of defense against infectious disease. This is why it's so important to maintain your microbiome on your skin and your gut, okay? And for women in your vaginal canal, everywhere in your body. <clears throat> um, so just be aware that also rashes could be signs. Uh, rashes and weird skin issues. Also something called fizzing. I don't know if that's a, a, a skin or neurological, but we do have ACE2 receptors all over our skin as well, okay? So this is, this is why it's good to put shea butter on your skin, cocoa butter, coconut oil, you know, like natural anti-inflammatory antimicrobial oils 
and things, not some chemical lotion, all right? And just being diligent about paying attention to your whole body and how you're feeling, because it's not just lungs. And, and that's why it's important for all of us to take care of ourselves in general, but especially now, especially now, because it is highly infectious. It manifests in a lot of different ways, can cause long-term damage. So it's important to take care of yourself. Um, and I have many videos where I talk about that, where I give advice on that as well. Um, I've also talked, spoken a lot about vitamin D and how important it is our immune system and so many things, but we have a lot of vitamin D receptors all throughout um, our body and our organs and our immune system. And I have a feeling that vitamin D plays a modulatory role with the ACE2 receptors. People who are have hypertension, all kinds of cancers, you know, diabetics, uh, people with high blood sugar, like all those things that are like chronically vitamin D deficient. Okay, so, and they all have more ACE2 and hip receptors. People with heart disease, same thing, okay? And remember that our heart, your lungs, and your brain need saturated fat in order to function at its highest level. Our lungs absolutely need saturated fat to be healthy and to prevent the inflammation that can come not only with this virus, but other things. So our lungs need saturated fat. Our heart needs saturated fat. Our heart uses saturated fat as a fuel, and our brain is 60% saturated fat particularly long-chain long saturated fats, which are found in animal foods, okay? If you don't believe me, do the research, okay? So we need a lot of saturated fats, and guess what? Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that comes in foods that's accompanied by saturated fats, like lard, like liver, like cod liver oil, like pasture eggs, like raw milk, okay? And they all have lots of fat-saturated fat. So they go hand in hand, all right? This is the reason why it's like, I did a video yesterday, let food be that medicine. This is it's really important, the foods that you eat and getting your nutrient stores up and making sure your microbiome is strong, okay? I mean, at the end of the day, it's your body and you could do what you want. I'm just trying to help, but I'm telling you, when people say, oh, they're not telling us everything, no, they're not telling us how many ways it can affect you, okay? It's not just a re upper respiratory tract infections, Okay? Definitely check out my videos on the gastrointestinal tract and the heart as well. Check out my videos on vitamin D and vitamin A and how to strengthen your immune system. Okay, people, so I just wanted to make you aware that um, it can affect, I think I said what it can do for your brain, the, when it, the central nervous system, it causes bad headaches, bad fatigue, can cause strokes can cause people to like shake like they're having a seizure, can cause delirium, okay, that's another thing. It can cause delirium and memory problems. And I've seen people on TV who don't remember going to the hospital. They don't remember their wife taking them to the hospital. They don't remember that they were in the hospital for 11 days. You know, they don't remember any of it because how it affected their central nervous system. Um, I saw a story of a, a woman who went to visit her father who was very active usually very active and energetic, and he would just sit there like a zombie, okay? And then he died a few, days, a few days later. So pay attention to all of that. It's the time to be extra diligent about our health, your health and pay attention, okay? Um, so I'm going to go. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of info and let you know to be aware. The heart, we have ACE2 receptors, can cause heart attacks, can cause heart failure, okay? A lot of people who are dying, it's not because of the lungs, it's because of the heart too. You know, if you have heart, chest pain, bad chest pain, and problems breathing, it could be your lungs, but it could also be your heart. And there are tons of ACE2 receptors on the heart. There are tons of ACE2 receptors on the liver, the kidney. A lot of people are also dying of sepsis, which is an infection all over all your organs. Well, there's ACE2 receptors on all the organs. So if that virus gets in there deep and starts to go to work, it can infect all your organs practically, including your skin. Okay, so be diligent and pay attention. Take care. Okay, people, if you learned something from this video, please like it, please share it, and please check out my other videos below. Okay, have a good day. Bye.